welcome to my channel in today's video we are going to see how we can integrate two salesforce instances without writing code now in one of my previous video i have displayed same if you see here salesforce to salesforce connection within 10 minutes and even in this approach i have not used any code now there is another approach where you can integrate salesforce uh, which is using an external object and salesforce cross or adapter now the difference between today's video and uh, this video basically my previous one is that in this approach data is physically copied between two salesforce instances so that means is uh, you would be end up using your data storage in both org so basically we are doing the data replication if you don't want to follow that uh, integration design pattern and you just want to integrate the data and see the data on the run time run time then this video is for you how we can integrate salesforce to salesforce uh, without writing uh, data physically but rather just saying on real time so for the sake of simplicity what i'm going to do is i'm going to use two org my one org is g29 and my another org is rdev so those both are my domain name so <clears throat> g29 org would try to connect to my another org and try to get an account related information just for the demo purpose now in order to achieve that what we have to do is first of all as two org needs to get connected and salesforce is pretty secure the first uh, operation or the first thing you need to keep in mind about authentication how that's gonna work so for that we need to use a connected app so in our source org we are going to create a connected app and this connected app would be used in my uh, org g29 which is nothing but destination org using auth provider so these two salesforce would interact with each other by the combination of auth provider and the connected app so that's first problem or first gate we crossed now another gate is how to get the data from zardev to g29 so for that we have to first create external data source and then once we create an external data source we have to use an external object <clears throat> so let's go and jump into that quickly what I will do is uh, this is my G29 org and uh, this is basically uh, my source org. So in source org, I have to go in app manager and I'm going to go a little bit fast forward from here. Now at this moment, I don't have any callback URL. So in order to get the callback URL, first I have to go back in my destination org and I have to create auth provider. So I will go back here and I will search for auth providers. And I'm going to create one auth provider saying that I want to connect to Salesforce. I will say I want to connect to Zardev and now there is a kind of the circular i need a consumer key and consumer secret but i will get consumer key consumer secret only when i create the connected app again if i keep it blank it would still work but i it is a very restricted access because then what it will do is it will use salesforce out of the box connected app that i don't want if i pass some value here but now if i pass some value then only i'm going to get the callback url so let's get this callback url from here and paste it here it said all these informations are pretty good let's save this it will take two to ten minutes so that's fine now by the time it is doing i will copy this consumer key from my source or to the destination or where i am creating an auth provider this consumer key <clears throat> so I have everything in place. It will take some time like 2 to 10 minutes uh, to confirm these connected app by time What I will do is I will go on external data source I will create a new data source I will say connect with my Zardev org And this is the Salesforce cross org adapter and this is the production where it all looks good I'm saying identity type should be named principal that means not everybody needs to log in if i keep the per user then everybody needs to authenticate themselves 
now as provider i already created uh, this jadev i will reuse that one now in the scope i will use full scope and also i need to go the refresh token so i will just copy the refresh token scope from here <clears throat> and paste it here so at this point all looks good we're also going to say that the external object is writable so we can perform uh, any operation in the destination or that would reflect in the source all now let's try to click on the save So as you can see, it is asking a uh, permission from the CSR that do you allow to, so basically it is going through the authentication phase right now. Once I authenticate, I already logged in. Now it is asking for authorization. So that means, okay, uh, destination or want all the full access and also the refresh token, I'm saying yes, allow it. So all look good. Authentication and authorization part is done using OAuth. Now the next step would be validate and sync. Now, when you click on the validate and sync, it will show every object from my destination or now I'm not interested to use every object. Let's only use an account and I will say sync. I only want to display an account from the destination or to sorry, sorry, from the source or to this all. So everything looks good. We already synced. Uh, I have a multi-currency enabled, so I'm getting some warning message related to multi-currency, but that's okay. We are not talking about multi currency in this video. So, once external data sources is done, let's go in external object. As you can see, external object account is there. If I click on here, I want to say account external because now otherwise I would be confused that which account we are talking about. I will say account external here as well. Not a good name, but it will help us to distinguish. Now, next thing we have to do is create a tab. So, I will go ahead. I will create a new tab for the external account. Pick up some theme. So I'm giving permission to all the custom apps and everything. All looks good. Now let's go ahead and open that account external. As you can see, account external is appearing here. Now see, I'm in G29 org. So this is the destination org or the client basically client is asking uh, it is going to make an O data connection to my actual or on real time so if i click on all only two three thousand record will be displayed at the same time as you can see so for an example let's say this is a record now this record really does not exist in this org if you see its extension is underscore underscore right this record actually exists here so if i go let's say on account here let's try to search for that account so this is the account now this so basically we are just successfully able to show all the account records from our source org to the or client or, or the destination org here now what i will do is as this external object is writable uh, see if it changes are being happen in real time so first thing is I will go on the client org and just validate can I update the account name. So I'm saying account updated in client. Save this. If I go back here and I refresh, as you can see, it got updated. So it's in sync. If I added anything here saying that client updated in source, save this. Let's go back here and let's refresh so basically we are able to integrate two salesforce instances bi-directional without physically copying the data the data actually is virtually existing here in my destination org any operation i do either in destination org or in the source or the data is getting updated only at one place so i hope this video helped you uh, and it helped you to clear some of the concept related to integration between the salesforce orgs uh, Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon to if you want to get notified on any new video that I'm going to publish in video.